Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Uh, today I will share with you a devotional message, which is very um, related with what we have been uh, uh, or have been sharing. Remember, uh, last month we focused on faith, and faith is it's just like the ground. You know, you prepare a ground, and so that you may put a seed, and the seed will grow. It's exactly like that. There's just the faith of the receiving part. And what we see today is the most powerful concept in the New Testament, especially, which is grace. We're going to talk more on grace and in this month, like we did last month. Let's focus on grace and go deeper, dig deeper on the concept of grace. So that's what we are going to see. Imagine that someone delivered a package to you or to your door and you open up and open the package from an anonymous person sent it to you and you're kind of very curious what could be in the package and you open up the box and you find very glittering kind of jewel um, written on it grace and let's just suppose that you don't know what it means grace and that means you don't know about that gift. You, you have the gift, but you don't know exactly what it is. So you start to search, ask people or Google, whatever, to find out what exactly you have received. That's what we are going to do in this um, devotional messages. We go deeper into the thing that you have received and what that the grace of God, which is the unmerited uh, gift, is a gift. It's, it's undeserved, free gift of God, what we call grace. The first time we find the word grace appear in the New Testament is in the Gospel of John, where he expounded what really grace is. And let, let me read the scripture before we go into further. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses um, 14. Uh, if you go there, it talks about here in verse 14. It says, and the word became flesh. It's talking about Christ. Okay, let me stop here. The word, which was in the beginning, which says in John 1, 1, the same chapter, he became flesh and dwelt among us, dwelt among them. When he says us, means John writing. So Christ came in the flesh and was among them, walked with them and ate with them and did several miracles uh, before them, and also died before them, and rose again, of course. And and then he said, uh, among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the one begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we talk about grace, you talk about Christ, and Christ is full of grace and truth. So what does it mean, grace? So when you see Jesus, what you will see will be grace, the free gift. If you think about when Jesus walked, of course, then John explains it, you know, we'll come back, we'll, we'll see that. But wherever Jesus went, you see two things. Number one, there is joy. The people rejoice in a very wonderful joy. Uh, experience, which is, of course, God's kingdom. And the other one is peace. He talked about joy and peace, these two things. So when grace comes, sadness will flee. Joy comes. When grace comes, enormity stop and reconciliation, peace comes. So wherever you see grace, Jesus walked with, who was full of truth, and the devil is full of lies. So Jesus is a perfect uh, a perfect example or a perfect picture of grace. If somebody's full of something, then you can say that, oh, this person is, you know, what he's filled of. So Christ is full of grace and truth. And then John explains more uh, on grace in verse 16 and verse 17. And of the fullness we have all received, grace for grace. So we, he said, uh, what we have received is from the fullness of Christ. He said, we received grace for grace. And then, for the law was given through Moses. 
but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So uh, grace and truth. You see, the law did not bring grace, but the law brought condemnation, showing us our sins because it was added because of transgression. If we read in other places in the book of Romans, it tells us that. But now grace came. Uh, there are two things when Christ came. Of course, there's forgiveness for all the past sins from the inherited sin from Adam and our, in our life, whatever we did uh, before we have accepted Christ will be forgiven. He showed grace to everyone who came to him, forgiving the sins, showing the love of God, the mercies of God. And in what the law would say, like, you know, you read to a woman who was caught in adultery, they brought her, and the law told us to stone such a woman, and what do you say? Now, grace came. And what did grace say? Anyone who has no sin, let him be the first one to throw the stone on her. So everybody left, and he said, where are your accusers? Jesus asked the woman, and she said, none. So he said, I would not accuse you too. So because he was, he, he, he came, he is a perfect uh, expression of grace, and he himself is grace. So he said, well, sin no more, and then he let her free. So that's why if the Son sets you free, you are free and indeed. So grace brings freedom, of course. It's, it's a freedom. Uh, a freedom from sin, bondage, condemnation, and all that. So Christ, uh, uh, here we see that he is a perfect symbol of grace. You see his grace in healing. You see his grace in saving people, setting them free. You see his healing in forgiving the sinners. You see his healing, that his his grace in, in many ways. So that grace, uh, whenever it is expressed, we see peace and joy. That means sinners are reconciled with God. And the second thing is that there is joy when grace is experienced, which is a symbol or a test of heaven, heaven on earth. So grace brings heaven into our heart. Well, the New Testament writers, uh, the apostles, including Apostle Paul, who uh, appeared, who saw Jesus on the road of Damascus, he also uh, wrote much on grace. And I want to see today from the book of Ephesians, chapter two, verse eight, which is uh, which talked about our salvation. And he wrote, you know, first of all, what we need to know is that when Paul wrote the book of Ephesians, he wrote it to believers who already are in Christ who are saved, born again, or whose life has been changed, who came from out of darkness into this marvelous light. So in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, very famous scripture, says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. You see, we were talking about that phase last week, and grace rests on faith. So Faith is the resting place of grace. I can say that. So when you, uh, to receive grace, for grace to rest, there should be a ground of faith. So, and, and then it says, by grace you've been saved through faith and not of your own, your service. It's the gift of God. So grace is a gift of God. As I told you in the beginning, that somebody comes, an anonymous person, which is sent by God and, and, and gives you a, a package uh, of a gift. That's exactly, and it's not like a, a payment of a wage because if it's a wage you are expecting that would come in that certain time, but grace is unexpected. It just showed up and, 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 and brought this thing from God. And then it says, it's not yourself, it's a gift of God. And not of workers, lest anyone should boast. So there's no boasting in grace. We, he who that boasts is at First Corinthians chapter 1 says, let him boast in God. So you boast in God and what he has done for you. So here it says, by grace you have been saved. It's a free gift that made you to be saved. Then you talk to people, how comes that you are boldly confessed that you are saved? Well, it's the grace of God. The grace of God. The grace just, you know, uh, uh, canceled all the past wrong deeds and all the punishments. The grace is sufficient for today to help you live the life that God wants you to live. And the grace is also sufficient to cancel the coming wrong deeds. That does not mean that gives us a license to sin, but it is 
It is not only just forgiving the past, but the present and the future. That's what grace is amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's, that's why we sing Amazing Grace, how sweet that sound, the saved a wretch like me. And, and that's, that's something that we uh, appreciate God's work. So by grace we have been saved. Paul understood that. He, he was, of course, Paul was a rabbi and one of the key person in the Jewish uh, religion leader. But when grace appeared to him on the road of Damascus, his life transformed. He was changed. He started to become a faith preacher, a preacher of grace. And how God saved him is not by works. It's not by what he did, uh, Paul did, but it's by what Christ did. So this is something that you need to um, look into. It's not by your fasting and prayer, you know, that you are saved. You can fast and pray for uh, uh, whatever day uh, or imitate Moses uh, going to without food and water for as many days you think of you could, but that does not save you. And if anybody just glory in his prayer life or in his fasting experience, which all are good, but that does not lead us into salvation or, or the healing. It's something God did not heal us because we fasted and cried and yell and God, where are you kind of thing. No, it's by the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So we stand on that foundation. Of course, we do fast and we do pray, and but it's not us, it's the grace in us. So when you fast, imagine that you're not saying, oh, I'm weak. I'm, you know, some people say, oh, I'm weak. I cannot fast even one day. Uh, yeah, you're weak. <laughs> you can't. But when grace comes, the, 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 the talk will be not your ability, but the grace enabling you through you and how that grace strengthens you and help you to walk it. So it, it just makes us to rely more on the grace of God. For doing the good deeds, it's not you. You depend on the power and strength that grace gives you. That's why, uh, you know, you focus on more on the grace. So some people say, oh, yeah, now you are saved. So you are licensed. Uh, does it mean that you shouldn't do good things? Oh, yeah, you should. But it's no longer you now. It's the grace that helps you to do good. That grace enables you. So the prayer and the seeking and the fasting is, to stop relying on yourself. That's all. That helps you a lot. Fasting, prayers will help us to stop relying on ourselves, but more relying on God. You see, that's what, when you are weak, that you know that you're strong. That's what Paul said, when I'm weak, I'm strong. So, to uh, really enjoy and, and be benefited from the grace of God is uh, when you know how this grace functions and and the function through faith and you receive it and this grace works through our life it saves us inside change brings an inside change you just get up in prayer accepting christ and pray you get up and when everybody say oh i don't know whether i go to heaven or hell you say boldly i will go to heaven i know i'm saved something has ha happened in you that grace was deposited inside of you and even in a spiritual life that grace makes the difference. So let's just today stand on this foundation and see that Jesus was full of grace and truth. And the devil has no grace at all, and he's full of lies as well. So, uh, but when we come to grace, that when we have the truth, lie or the enemy will not stand before us. And when we have the grace, we walk on him and, and defeating him. That's what will happen. So um, in this week, as you more ponder on the grace of God and open up your heart and let that grace bring joy and peace. You see, joy is not because you attain your goals. There is a joy when you attain your goal, but even when you are on the process of attaining your goal, you enjoy, rejoice, in the Lord. That's why Paul said that while he was in prison, uh, when it seemed failure, uh, uh, you know, in the eyes of the world, but they were rejoicing, singing at night, and then the power of God came and 
you know, because they had faith. And when there is faith, there comes grace. And that grace pulled them out of the prison. And that's an amazing thing. So as you just, you know, okay, embark on faith, embrace grace, and, and rejoice in the Lord. And the peace also. It, first of all, it gives you peace with yourself. Because so many people don't have peace with themselves. They are fighting with themselves. And not only that, they have no peace with God. That's a big problem. When there is sin, that means there is no peace with God. So what does it mean? When you accept Christ, that enmity, the wall between you and God is destroyed by grace. Not by anyone's pleading and praying and whatever. No, it's by what Jesus did on the cross. And now peace with God. Peace with yourselves. And peace with others. Some people don't have peace with others. When I don't have peace with myself, then I will not have peace with others too. That's a problem. Well, what we need is more of his grace, that we may have peace with ourselves, peace with, with God, peace with others. And that devil is not an author of peace. He's an author of, author of confusion. Uh, bring all kinds of disturbance. In the name of Jesus, we break the force of the Satan and his works. May God give you grace this week and give you more deeper knowledge of what grace is and what grace can make you of and what you can become through the grace of God. And if you have not met Jesus, the Lord of your life, let this today, the grace day, be yours. Accept him, invite him into your heart. And once, you don't have to do it every week or every month. It's just a one-time thing. And believe that he came into you. Believe that his grace has saved you. So that's why when Paul Wright wrote to the Ephesians people and to us also, he said, you've been saved by grace through faith. It's not no longer your work, but this is the gift of God. So no one should boast with that thing. So, Say, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive my sins, I receive your grace, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying for my sins, and I believe that I am saved. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer, stand in faith. Well, I want to pray before I close today's devotion. May the Lord touch you and give you grace to overcome every uh, attack of the enemy. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that grace brings the test of heaven to my brother and sister. I pray that the joy of the Lord may be their strength. I pray that they may test what heaven is, Lord. I pray for healing. I rebuke every sickness and disease in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of God come upon them and take away sickness, disease, sorrow, and sadness. And I pray for joy and healing and health to be imparted in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless their children, bless the hand of their work, and prosper them in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's more go deeper digging on grace this week. Thank you for praying and supporting this ministry. I hope that you will have a blessed week by the grace of God. In Jesus' name, amen.